main treatment for bowel cancer is surgery which involves removal of the affected segment of bowel. Treatment, however, also depends on the location and the stage of the cancer. Some patients need preoperative treatment with chemotherapy or radiotherapy before surgery is performed. The site of the cancer determines the exact operation. The bowel part of our digestive system is divided into the small bowel and the large bowel. The small bowel consists of the duodenum, which is a continuation of the stomach, jejunum and the ileum, which connects to the large bowel. The first five feet or 150 centimetres of the large bowel is known as the colon and the last 12 to 15 centimetres is the rectum, which is then followed by the anal canal. The rectum commences at the rectosigmoid junction or at the end of the sigmoid colon. The main function of the colon is to absorb water from bowel contents to form a solid stool. The rectum acts as a storage reservoir for formed stool to be expelled at the time of bowel motion. There are various approaches or techniques to perform bowel cancer surgery, such as open surgery and laparoscopic surgery. Keyhole or laparoscopic surgery involves performing the operation using smaller incisions or cuts in the abdominal wall. Gas, which is normally in the form of CO2, is introduced into the abdominal cavity to create a space for the surgical team to carry out the operation using cameras and long, thin instruments. Occasionally, the surgeon may find it is not possible to safely complete an operation using the keyhole or laparoscopic technique. And in these situations, a larger incision is made and the operation is completed as an open procedure. Also referred to as conventional surgery, open surgery involves one large incision or cut in the tummy wall. The surgeon will perform the whole operation through this incision. There are some advantages of laparoscopic surgery over open surgery without compromising on the quality of the cancer surgery itself. And some of these advantages include smaller incisions, less post-operative pain, short hospital stay, and a quicker return to normal activities. All the following bowel cancer operations can be performed either with the open or keyhole technique. These operations usually take between two to four hours. Right hemicolectomy is an operation to remove the right side of the colon. This is commonly performed for patients with colon cancer, patients with inflammatory bowel disease conditions such as Crohn's disease, and also for various types of appendix tumours. During the operation, the right side of the bowel or colon is fully mobilised, and together with the last part of the small bowel, or intestine, both are removed. This also involves taking away the blood vessels and the lymph nodes related to this section of bowel. The two ends of bowel, being the ileum and the colon, are then joined back together to form an anastomosis either using sutures or stapling devices. Left hemicolectomy is an operation to remove the left side of the colon and is usually performed for cancers of the left colon and inflammatory bowel disease conditions such as Crohn's disease. During this operation, the left side of the bowel is fully mobilised and removed, dividing the bowel ends. This also involves taking away the blood vessels and the lymph nodes to this section of bowel. The two healthy ends of bowel, colon to colon, are then joined together to form an anastomosis with either sutures or stapling devices. This is an operation to remove part of the sigmoid colon and the top of the rectum. It is performed for patients with sigmoid or upper rectal cancer or for benign conditions such as diverticular disease and inflammatory bowel disease. During the operation, the left colon is mobilised down to the upper rectum and the sigmoid colon and the upper rectum are removed. This involves taking away the blood supply and the lymph nodes to that section of the bowel. A join or anastomosis between the remaining left side of the colon and the top of the rectum is then performed either using sutures or stapling devices. 
This is an operation to remove all or part of the rectum, usually for a cancer in the middle or the lower part of the rectum. Some patients may have had radiotherapy prior to surgery. During the operation, part or all of the rectum is removed, usually with part of the sigmoid colon. This means taking out all of the rectum along with its blood supply, lymph nodes and an envelope of fatty tissue called the mesorectum. Usually the left side of the colon is fully mobilised to allow a join to be performed in the pelvis without tension. The surgical team then remake the join or anastomosis between the remaining left colon and the remaining part of the rectum using stapling devices. If this join is very low down in the pelvis close to the anus, a temporary stoma is likely to be performed to protect this join. This is an operation to remove all of the rectum and the anus. It is usually performed for patients with a very low rectal cancer. Most patients with rectal cancer in this scenario will have had radiotherapy prior to surgery. During the operation, all of the rectum and anus is removed, usually along with part of the sigmoid colon. This means taking out all of the rectum along with its blood supply, lymph nodes, an envelope of fatty tissue which is called the mesorectum. To remove the anus, an incision around the bottom is also required. A colostomy will then be fashioned, usually on the left side of the abdomen. Bowel cancer surgery is a major abdominal operation. There are certain risks and complications that patients need to be aware of. Complications common to any major bowel cancer operation include bleeding, infections such as wound infections, an ileus, and this is where the bowel may stop working after the operation and take a few days to get going. This usually settles down on its own. A tube is placed in the nose into the stomach which helps stop nausea and vomiting until the ileus resolves. An astomotic leak. This is when the bowel lens that have been joined together do not heal. This requires antibiotics and may necessitate a drain or a second operation. Other complications include blood clots within the leg, this is called a DVT or deep vein thrombosis, or in the lungs, this is called pulmonary embolus or PE. Other infections such as chest and urine infections are also possible. There are important nerves in the pelvis that control erections and ejaculation in men and bladder emptying in both men and women, and these may be damaged during this type of operation. Patients who have had radiotherapy are at higher risk of pelvic nerve dysfunction after surgery. Overall, for bowel cancer surgery, there is approximately a 1% risk, meaning 1 in 100 patients will not survive this type of operation. A stoma is formed during surgery when the end of the bowel is brought to the surface of the abdomen and the bowel empties into a specialised disposable pouch rather than the usual manner. This can be for a single or combination of reasons. Often when the rectum is removed and an anastomosis or join has been performed low down in the pelvis close to the anus, a temporary stoma is formed to allow this join to heal. If this is the case, then a second smaller operation is performed to reverse this stoma sometime after the, in the initial operation. If this is the case, then a second smaller operation is performed to reverse this stoma sometime after the initial operation. After the operation, patients will have an intravenous drip, a catheter, which is a tube inserted into the bladder, will remain for a few days. And occasionally an abdominal drain is used and this is a small tube passing through the abdominal wall into the abdomen and this is normally removed after a number of days. For bowel cancer surgery an epidural is often used to provide the pain relief after the operation and is usually continued for a few days. Other pain relief methods are a PCA or patient controlled analgesia. Your anaesthetist will be able to discuss these options with you before the operation. 
Patients are usually allowed to eat and drink as soon as they feel able to after the operation. And it's very important to mobilise and we encourage our patients to mobilise as soon as possible after the surgery. In total we find hostel stay is usually up to five days for keyhole surgery and around seven to ten days for open surgery, but maybe longer. Following discharge from hospital patients are encouraged to keep mobile. However, they should avoid heavy lifting or increased physical activities for up to about six weeks.